God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands every man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak of a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak of God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed through, to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. (laughs) Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. You've heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have heard it said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything else or anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today I would like us to reflect on the power of choice. And we've heard a lot about the law. And whenever we talk about the the law, uh, there are two things there. The letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Now I would like to ask you, suppose uh, you are driving uh, on G Avenue, I know from between here and and the light, you are supposed to be driving at what speed? I think it's 35, right? 30. 35, then after the light, then it becomes 55. Now suppose uh, the sign is very clear. Now you, you, you are driving over there. at 35. So that is, you are observing the letter of the law. Now suppose there is no car in front of you, there is no vehicle uh, following you, everything is clear, and you decide to, to drive at 40. Are you breaking the law? Are you? Okay. 
Now, suppose you, you are driving at 55, and then a deer jumps on the road, and you slam on your brake, you, you begin driving at, at 30. Are you breaking the law? But you, you're, not, you're not driving at 55. So, uh, the letter of the law states that uh, you just have to follow the law as, as it is. So if it is 55, be there. So that is not minding whatever might happen. There might be a deer there, might be a child crossing the road, or even sometimes maybe you have a semi which has lost control, and you are cruising and you can see it really coming and flashing like this. Will you stick to 55 and it is rolling at 80? So that is the spirit of the law. Then <clears throat> I remember one time when I was still very new and I was preparing a, a, a couple for, for their marriage. So uh, we have this survey, the called Focus uh, Survey, and it has tons of questions. And uh, the Conhel uh, knows what are they supposed to answer. It is either agree or disagree. Then there's a third one, unsure. So it might, might ask, will you, will you get along with your mother-in-law? So you either say uh, agree or disagree or unsure. So the, the lady who was getting everything was just was to the point, agree or disagree. But the man, 50% of the questions was unsure. <laughs> so the unsure is not a choice, but uh, the agree or disagree should be, it is either yes or a no. Then now the unsure should be very, should be very minimal, but, but not like 50%. Now who, who, who will be keeping track of the check? Unsure. <laughs> So anyhow, Jesus today continues uh, with the Sermon on the Mount and is trying to uh, take us through the spirit of the law. So going deeper. So this is the, the third Sunday in a series of six that will, will read the Sermon on the Mount. Chapter 5, 6, and 7 of the Gospel uh, according to Matthew. And today's reading uh, highlights the internal thoughts and desires and stresses their moral consequences for good and evil. And we have a choice to make. So Jesus clearly teaches us that uh, sins are committed in the human mind if one has a definite intention of doing wrong, even if the decision is not acted on. So for example, if we hate someone so bitterly that we want to kill him or her, Jesus says that we are guilty of murder. And that is the uh, murder by intention. Then he says also the same, uh, the same case. Someone might say that I have never been unfaithful to my spouse, but lust for another in your heart, you are still committing uh, the sin, so, uh, though it is uh, in the heart. So whenever, uh, whenever we, we begin Mass, we normally say the potential uh, right. I confess to Almighty God, help me. That I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Okay, stop there. So, see, there are four things there. In my thoughts, and in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. So, I may not kill in my action of taking a, a gun and shooting at somebody, but in my thoughts. Uh, in what I have, uh, even what I have not done, suppose there is a, there is a hole there, and I see you, say, 
Let him go there. So Jesus uh, is trying to take us from this level of just the letter of the law to the spirit. So Jesus is urging us to go beyond the law, the legalism, and uh, a minimalistic approach to our spirituality. So he says that it is not just adultery that keeps, uh, uh, keeps us out of God's kingdom, but the lust that leads to that action there. And it is not murder that blocks us from entering the kingdom of God, but also the anger which can lead one to have that intention of performing the act of murder. And he says it's not just a swearing, a false oath that is contrary to God's way, but anything that misleads or pretends to be the truth. So that is why it's very clear down there. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. So if you are genuine like that, then there will be even no point of an oath because what you are saying is true. Now, uh, looking at next week's uh, gospel, we'll have more examples. It is not the supposed justice of seeking revenge. We shall hear an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So it is not that which is contrary to God's kingdom or God's reign. We must go further and do good when you are even, even when you have been hurt by someone. It is not fair uh, to love your neighbors and hate your enemies. That is contrary to God's kingdom or God's way. We must go further and love our enemies and return good to those who have not been good to us. So Jesus is using these examples of uh, legalistic people to make his point. He <clears throat> says, unless your behavior goes beyond that kind of superficial morality, then you are not my disciples. Jesus here is not demanding a mere conformity or even rigid compliance to a set of laws is calling us to a deeper spirituality. Jesus is calling us to greatness by our participation in the reign of God. So living this way requires a certain level of maturity, a depth of spiritual wisdom, and we aren't necessarily there yet. But God recognizes this and understands from the first reading, Sirach reminds us that God understands our sinfulness. God understands our intentions and motives, whether for good or evil. So if you read the scriptures, you'll realize that uh, Jesus, you don't see Jesus uh, being upset with the struggling sinners. But he gets upset with people who use their cleverness to get out of things and who at the same time hold heavy expectations on others. So when we are discouraged or feeling weak and sinful, we may start to think that it is impossible for us to be holy. Or we might even think that holiness is just reserved for a few people. But that's not what the scriptures tell us today. Sirach points out that we have choices to make. It says, for water or for fire. So our choices have the potential for growth or destruction, for life or for death. But they are our choices to make. And each person has the freedom to make them. <clears throat> Making those choices happen does not always come easily. And growing towards holiness requires time and effort. So we don't get it perfect every time, even when we are trying so hard. But we are blessed to know that God understands as we, as we stumble through 
and he is extending his mercy again and again. God gives us the wisdom too from the second reading. <clears throat> so we have the freedom to choose for the, the good or, or the evil. But he gives us also the wisdom to discern what is good and what is not good. And then also he nourishes us every time we come for mass. He speaks to us and he nourishes us to be able to make the right choices. So I would like us to remember today on the power of choice that there will be always good news and bad news about the choices we make. The good news is that we will be given what we choose. And the bad news is that we will be given what we choose. Now, which is better? <laughs> yeah, so the good news will be given what we choose, the bad news will be given what you choose, but God has given us also the wisdom. So may we choose the good and also apply the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.